Hey there. I get asked this question every once in a while. What is DOI? And usually it's followed by, why should I care? Should I track it? Should I use it? So let's break it down. DOI stands for Document Object Identifier. I used to think it was date of insertion. It isn't. It's Document Object Identifier. This is like a paper's social security number. We have those here in the US, unique to individuals. In the case of DOI, it's a combination of numbers and letters and even, um, I think maybe even some punctuation. We can have a look at that. And so what it does is it identifies each paper individually. This was started back in the late 1990s. Uh, this is applied to all kinds of, in fact, yeah, peer-reviewed journal articles um, get a DOI now. If you're using references that predate 1997, maybe, you won't have DOIs in your citations. So sometimes you'll see a bibliography that has some historical papers, or not even, I can't say historicals in the 1990s, but older papers, and there won't be a DOI, so it's not included. But if there is one, you should always include it in your bibliography, in your reference list, and that includes if you're handing out a reference list, if you're doing a poster presentation or a conference uh, slide presentation, but for posters and for slide presentations, you don't necessarily have to include the DOI if you're doing on-slide references. So that's something to get a little guidance from the organization when you're presenting. Um, the DOI would really kind of clutter up your visuals if that's what you're going for there. But let's go ahead and look at where you get the DOI and what you do with it. So we're going to pop on over here into PubMed. And I'm doing work these days on patient experience, user experience. So I've done a search. I have my reference potential reference list return. And so we look just here at the three, I guess there's three on the screen that you can see. And um, you can see that we've got the title of the article, the authors, it's the basics of the citation with the journal, the date, uh, volume, page number, all the good stuff. And then it's got DOI at the end of each of these entries. So these articles are from 2022, 2018, 2021, so we would expect to see them. You don't want to ignore it and not pull it in when you pull your references into your reference manager. And I hope you're using a reference manager. Um, I've got lots of videos for those. So if you are typing your references by hand, I'm very sorry to hear that, but you would need to type in the DOI. And you can see it's kind of a complicated number for each of these. So let's go ahead and open up uh, pain assessment, the emergency department. We're going to go ahead and click on this reference. And here we are, and we see that EndNote Click is telling us where they can we can get the PDF. Uh, but here's the title of the article. Uh, the type of study is now getting show, showing up on the page, which is kind of nice. And we can see all the information right here, front and center, DOI is there. Again, kind of a complicated number. So if you were citing for a poster presentation, you can use the little cite action over here to the right. And then what you would do is copy everything except for the DOI. Um, and uh, and also, by the way, and pull in your format here, and I probably should show another video of this if I don't have that already available. But if you are going to pull it, in my case, into Zotero, that's my tool of choice these days, I can click on my plugin here in Google Chrome, click on the down arrow, add it to my patient and user experience folder, and click on Done. Then I can come on over into Zotero, and oops, I've got a duplicate up here, but here's what I just imported. If I look to the right, info is all my metadata. I come on down and I see DOIs right here with all of the numbers and letters and punctuation to make this unique. So that's the way to get it. It's going to be there in your metadata. Then when you play around with, with your citations, you insert them, format your bibliography. You don't have to worry about it again. So I hope this helps and happy researching.